Today we're out here taking a look uh, at our hives and we're checking up on their food stores, looking at their overall health and trying to do things now to set us up uh, for success moving forward. We've got a couple tools that we use uh, to do that and wanted to share uh, some of that with you. Hey guys, welcome back to the farmstead. I hope this day finds you and your bees well. We're at the first part of March, and I tell you, we're starting to get uh, some spring fever here. Uh, we've been down just a couple days ago, down to 10 degrees, and then today we're up to almost 60. Uh, so we're having these super huge roller coaster dips. Uh, so when it's warm out like today, you can't not help but to get out and uh, see the bees and start to get excited about the rest of the year. Before we get started, let me just say, we are not the uh, expert master beekeepers giving the entire world beekeeping uh, advice, uh, financial advice, marital advice, uh, or even how to fix your Chevy pickup advice. But what we can do is just share our experience, what we're doing here in our bee yard, uh, to try to find a way we can keep working with the bees, uh, keep increasing our overwintering success, uh, and to do it in a way where we can try to do right by the bees. So that being said... Uh, let's talk about some of the things that we're doing here uh, in our bee yard this time of year. So right now, it's the very first part of March. And uh, when we look around, the grass is starting to green up. Uh, just today, the elderberry are just starting to leave out. Uh, the maple buds are starting to swell. They're getting ready to open up, which is about the end of the maple tapping season. Um, so everything is, is building up towards uh, that spring push uh, for the bees here. Once these maples uh, start to open up and blossom, uh, it's going to provide some nutrients uh, for the bees. And that's kind of like the safe spot. Once we get it to there, everything is pretty good. But that's, that's still going to be about a couple, two, three weeks out before we can kind of see that, maybe four weeks. Uh, so for right now, the first part of March, this is one of the most dangerous times or the riskiest times in the bee yard uh, for most colonies. When it's warm and it's nice out like this, we see the bees flying. We get excited. We think, yay, our bees made it through the winter. There's still a lot of winter left. Uh, it doesn't take anything around here, uh, it, especially uh, where we're at here. And the, we're in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains here, east of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, um, and we're, we're, we get some weird, wacky weather. We're, it's got a lot of roller coaster temperature swings. Uh, the weather can turn sour uh, and just a heartbeat flat. Uh, and it doing that it can really put not a damper on your spirits, but it's kind of hard on, on not only bees, but cows and pigs and chickens. Uh, it's hard on livestock in general. Um, so there's a couple things that we can do with our bees to help uh, kind of buffer that just a little bit. So most of our hives we go into with, with a lot of honey, uh, excess honey. But what we're finding, what I'm finding here uh, in Ohio is that the bees, they'll start to build up. They'll burn through that honey even if there's excess honey. Uh, because we have these warm days, uh, almost unnaturally warm uh, throughout the wintertime. And they're, they're feeding, they're breaking cluster, feeding, breaking cluster. So they're actually tearing through uh, a lot more honey uh, than they would if we would just stay cold and they could cluster. So the bees are constantly breaking cluster, feeding, uh, spreading out. And then when, at nighttime, when it gets uh, down to you know 10 degrees or 5 degrees when it's been this warm during the day, they have a hard time sometimes getting back into that cluster. So all we can really do at this point is to make sure that our hives are still sized appropriately and... Uh, do we have any extra or excess or insurance sugar on top? Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, I think I can do this fancy thing where I point and there might be like a link for a video. Is it here or is it here? I'm not sure. But look at one of these places here. Check out our video on winter feeding. What we do is make a little rim uh, for the top of the hive. A shim board is what it is. And we add dry sugar on top. And what that does is it gives the bees an opportunity to have just uh, some extra carbohydrates right there on top of the hive. Here's the weird thing. What we've seen is that the bees will actually, when it's on top and it's nice out, they leave the honey in the pantry, but they're going to go up and they're going to start using that sugar while it's there. 
okay? And then that sugar gets depleted, and once the sugar's gone, then they come back down and they get to where the honey's at. Now, of course, that's during the day when it's nice and warm. When it, when it starts to cool off, they come back down and cluster, and they cluster on the frames down where the honey's at. But the sugar has been a nice insurance policy, giving them just, just some extra uh, food storage. The nice thing about the, the sugar is it also acts like a desiccant on top of there to absorb some of that moisture. Uh, so let's go take a look and open up a hive here and see uh, what's going on here. So we're going to op op open the lid there and look, we can see there's still a lot of sugar in there and a lot of bees are moving around there. It's nice to see all these bees uh, and, and some, some sugar left. So we feel pretty good about this colony. It's going to take off and uh, do real well. One of the other things that we do uh, this time of year when it gets this warm and the bees are all out flying and we can open up a hive and we see they're moving, uh, what we've chose to do is go ahead and, and treat them with a salic acid early on in the year. Different parts of the country, it might be a little bit different. Uh, also, whatever your management plan or methods or styles uh, or opinions are, you know, you may, maybe you don't treat and that's totally cool. If you do treat uh, and you're using a salic acid this time of year, they have very little brood. Uh, and once they have broken cluster and they're all out moving around, it's a good time to start knocking down some of those mites if a salic acid uh, is what you use. Later on in the year, we use a bunch of different things. We use uh, comfrey and rhubarb and staghorn sumac berries in our smoker just to give a little bit of an extra salic acid. A salic occurs in everything, just about leafy green vegetables and things. Um, so we use that uh, with a pro vape. Uh, and it works out really good to give uh, them that little extra uh, organic acid to help knock down the mites. It's a, something we can do early in the year to help uh, ensure or help uh, kind of better the odds that they're going to be successful uh, and not be dealing with mite pressure so they can build up nice and build up strong. That really helps us when we're making early splits because we're making early splits with bees that are really healthy. And that's really important. One tool we use in the bee yard uh, is a FLIR camera. We use thermal imaging to take a look at the hive. It helps us kind of project uh, how many nukes are still viable uh, and to help plan for nuke sales. Now, these things aren't exactly cheap. Uh, however, I had this from one of my other businesses. Uh, so it was an expense already paid. I already had it. Uh, would I buy this just for bees? I'm not real sure. I'm sure you've seen a lot of really impressive looking photos and videos of folks uh, sharing their, their FLIR shots. They're cool. If you have, a, uh, you know, extra money or disposable income and you want to buy it, cool. There's ways you can check to see if your bees are alive without one of these things, but they're kind of cool. They're kind of handy. Uh, so let's open it up and we'll hook it up. We're using an, or just a regular iPhone. We'll plug it in and we'll see what it does. Okay. We'll go ahead and get my phone on here. And we'll go to the FLIR app, plug it in, turn it on, see if we can see the dog. There's Maybell. Say hi, Maybell. Good girl. So you can see, that's pretty cool, huh? Now I wonder, let me put the Tom Selleck filter on. Let's see. Huh? Is that handsome? <laughs> so. There's what I look like with thermal imaging. That's the dog. Let's see what the bees look like. Now we can see. Right there. So you can see the cluster kind of outlined in here. Same thing here. There's the cluster. And we can use this and get a heat uh, register off of that. And let's see. Right now it's saying it's about 47 degrees on the outside. It looks like all the hives are doing good. I got plenty of plenty of bees in there. Let's see if we can look inside here. There's some bees coming out. It's pretty cool. All right, so what does that tell us? Well, 
it tells us that those boxes have bees in it. These are just boxes just laying here. You can kind of see the difference. There's, there's nothing inside of those. There's bees flying across there. But you can look at those versus these, and you can start to see the difference. Now, um, early morning, it's pretty good, too. When it's a little bit colder out, um, you can also see. But uh, you can see right here from this video, this top box here just has, uh, has some honey in it. There's a uh, dry uh, feeding shim, and then here's the, the, that, the brood chamber. Um, so, and there's the dog. So you can kind of see, you know, you can you can you, you can see kind of what's going on on some of these hives here, and it can kind of give you help to give you some kind of idea uh, as to what's going on uh, to help plan for the future. Is it necessary? I'm not real sure. Uh, is it cool? Sure. Do you have to have one? Well, it's up to your budget and whether you can get permission from the wife, I suppose. Just wanted to remind you, if you're like me, uh, you're probably behind on everything. Take a breath. I get it. I am too. We all are. It's okay. I think it's only natural for beekeepers. I want to take the moment to remind you, if you haven't already ordered your frames and your foundation for the year, get on that. Go ahead and do that. Order your frames now. Uh, get them assembled uh, so they're ready uh, in the month of March. So when April comes and you're ready to get going, they're already done. Foundation is going to be the tricky thing if you don't already have it because most places won't ship that and so it's a little bit warmer at night Otherwise the wax tends to break up and crumble on you and it's a whole mess So just a reminder if you haven't already order your frames order your foundation And hey, if you're looking for bees, we'd love it if you keep us in mind at naturesimagefarm.com We're gonna have uh, spring nukes available Ohio nukes I think we're almost sold out of packages, but we will also have queens that we ship out all year long our stock uh, came from the Fat Bee Man. It's overwintered here for several years uh, in Ohio. So they're calm, gentle, prolific bees. We're happy with them. I think you will be, you will be too. So if you're looking for bees, uh, give us a try. We'd love to help you out. If you have any questions, uh, shoot them off here in the comments. Uh, and as always, we appreciate you watching, liking, subscribing. Click on that bell so you can uh, be notified when all the new videos come out. Uh, I think I'm saying all the things that you're supposed to say when you're doing YouTube videos. Uh, if I'm not, well, we'll just do better next time. But anyways, guys, really, thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Uh, as always, uh, be the change, be the lighthouse, and keep it contrary. We'll see you next time. Hey, can you help us out? Hit like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and be sure to check these great videos out too.